happy little games. Patriotism in video games has been around for a long time. There's nothing better than celebrating your love for the country than blowing up a piece of it. Speaking strictly of retro games, look no further than Duke Nukem 3D. We all know Duke came here to kick ass and chew bubblegum, and he was all out of gum. But that didn't stop him from blasting the alien pig-like scum back to where they came from. Another one that clearly feels like an American defending his soil would have to be Contra. Clearly the influence for this game was the characters of Rambo and John Matrix from Commando. Another one where the president is kidnapped and if you were a bad enough dude, you were rewarded with a nice big cheeseburger. Today though, we are talking about a real American hero. This particular individual would rise up against oppression and defend not only his honor, but the honor of his fellow teammates. No, I'm not talking about professional wrestler G.I. Bro. I'm talking about the classic military team of G.I. Joe, and more specifically, the G.I. Joe arcade game from Konami. What was the original IP that Konami wanted to bring to the arcades but were unable to? So let's lock and load, and remember, I've got just two words for you. Yo, Joe! This is the history of G.I. Joe from Konami. The year is 1991, and the higher-ups at Konami are looking to continue their successful arcade run of licensed IPs. The most successful for the company was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Followed up by the extremely successful Simpsons arcade game. And to a lesser extent, Aliens. And Roller Games. One point. Three points. The company had recently acquired the license for the upcoming Batman sequel, and was looking to create an arcade game based on the property just in time for the 1992's movie release. Konami had mistakenly thought that the license would allow them to create both home and arcade titles based on the property, but unfortunately, it only allowed for the home market. In its place, they decided to use a real American hero by the name of G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe had been around since 1964, back when it was still cool for little boys everywhere to play with dolls. Now, I'm not one to talk because I played with my 8-inch Mago superheroes when I was 8 years old as well. These were not to be referred to as dolls since parents would not buy little boys dolls to play with, so the word doll was never to be used. Thus, the term action figure was born. The original line of action figures were 12 inches with cloth uniforms and lots of accessories. Now, even though I'm old enough that all I do whenever I go to the toilet is crap dust, these were a bit before my time. I had the 3.75 inch figures and vehicles growing up, but was never fortunate enough to have a 12 inch one. The series would go on for over 10 years until finally reinventing itself as a 3.75 inch tall plastic action figure. He also took up the moniker of a real American hero, and once again there were loads of accessories and vehicles to play with. In 1989, a cartoon series was produced by DIC Enterprises entitled G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero. This is what the Konami arcade game is based on. The developers of the arcade game wanted something that had featured plenty of cartoon violence and lots of explosions. They also wanted to carry over the four-player co-op feature that was so successful in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and The Simpsons. 
This would not be the titular team's first foray into the world of computer chips and silicone diodes. That honor would go to 1983's G.I. Joe Cobra Strike on the Atari 2600. The graphics actually look pretty good on the primitive machine. In 1985, Epic Software released G.I. Joe, a real American hero for the Commodore 64 and Apple II. This is the one I remember the most growing up as a kid and it was fantastic. Different gameplay styles along with cutscenes and excellent graphics. The image of Duke telling you to turn the disc over will forever be etched in my mind. The toys were introduced in the European market under the Action Man line known as Action Force. In 1987, Action Force was released for the Commodore 64, Amstrad, and Zenic Spectrum, which looks to be just a choplifter knockoff. There were also a couple of games for the NES that received positive reviews as well. If you'd like me to do a more comprehensive review of these games, let me know in the comments down below. G.I. Joe, a real American hero, was released by Konami in 1992. As the story goes, the ruthless Cobra Commander and his Cobra Vipers and Toxo Vipers are attempting to take over the world. They have infiltrated the big cities and it's up to your team to band together and take them down. The story is told through excellent cinematics which is par for the course for Konami games at this time. Large, detailed, animated sprites with plenty of scaling and rotation really pull you into the story. As I mentioned, the game is a four-player simultaneous co-op affair in which you have your choice of Duke, Roadblock, Scarlet, or Snake Eyes. Unfortunately, they all appear to play exactly the same. There are three large missions to complete. The first one is separated into three subsections. The second mission has two and the final one has only one. The gameplay is a third person over the shoulder on rail shooter in which you have to shoot and blow up anything that moves. The perspective reminds me of the arcade game Operation Thunderbolt minus the light gun. Your primary weapon of attack is your gun and your secondary attack is your missile launcher. You only have a certain amount when you start the game but more are available on the playfield. You have a life bar which will deplete with the more damage you take. Thankfully, there are a few power-ups littered throughout the playfield including rapid fire, missiles, and health kits. At the end of each stage, you have to fight a massive sub-boss. The in-game graphics are fantastic with smooth, detailed animation and large character sprites. It is pure chaos when unleashing your weapon on the vile Cobra but there is something oh so satisfying about blowing up everything on the screen. And I do mean everything because with enough bullets and rockets, even buildings will crumble in your wake. The sound effects are superb with loud, digitized artillery samples. It wouldn't be a G.I. Joe arcade game without the team yelling out Yo Joe when Cobra even yells out Cobra as their battle cry. For some strange reason, Snake Eyes even yells out Yo Joe even though he's a mute in the cartoon. 
certain bosses are absolutely mammoth with some of them taking up the entire screen. Yes, they do look a little chunky, but for a 1992 arcade game, they still look pretty impressive. The backgrounds are nicely detailed with plenty of color and lots of parallax scrolling on display. In between each mission are some nice cutscenes that further set up the story. The game uses the same assets from the cartoon and popular toy line in this game. If you were a fan of the series growing up, you will immediately recognize all of the vehicles and characters throughout. The game takes place across eight stages involving three missions. The first mission takes place on an airfield which includes a chemical plant. An airbase. And Cobra's weapon plant. The second mission takes place in the jungle. And also a cavern base. And the third mission takes place on a battleship. The mini bosses you encounter are Tomax and Zamat. Metalhead. Baroness. Yo, yo, yo. Major Blood. Yo, yo. Yo, yo, yo. Destro. And finally, the Cobra Commander. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> After you defeat the Cobra Commander, the story unfolds with a nice cutscene as peace once again is brought to the world. The game was released in 1992 and although Konami was able to release it in the arcades, they did not have the home license which at that time was held by Capcom. This means that no home conversions were ever released. It would have been a struggle putting this on any of the 16-bit home systems although it might have fared pretty good on the Sega CD or Sega 32X. The game is extremely fun to play and blowing up the venomous cobra while saluting the country is the perfect way to let off some steam. If you've never had a chance to defend the USA while teaming up with your buddies, give this game a shot. You'll be glad you did. If you enjoyed this video or any of my content, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also, if you would like to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. Thank you all so much for watching.